Nicholas, Telegraph now. I must say it sounds easier than I thought to get a Nobel Prize. Well, Nobel Prize, you know, um, the, the, the same prize that went to Yasser Arafat and Barack Obama for That's true. doing well. Yes. Nothing. Well, this is <laughs> Not a, this one, though. This a is bit more prestigious because yeah. this is an economy. Uh, Nobel Prize awarded to gender pay gap economist. And when I first read the title, I thought, OK, so now we are propagate, propagating this myth of gender pay but gap, in fact, no, which doesn't the way around. exist. But to be fair, Claude, Claudia Golden, who is a professor of Harvard, studied uh, gender pay gap or women at work for yep. four decades. Uh, she has some fair points. Indeed, she says it's not the fault of the so-called sexist bosses that some women mm. earned less because they were, you know, uh, having child caring duty. Now, yep. uh, here it says uh, she found the main factor holding women's earnings is caring for children. I don't know if the wording is hers or the telegraphs. I don't agree with the wording because. It's, it's not that, you know, it's not holding you back if you care for your children. Well, but it's, it's, I mean, just objectively speaking, in terms of your earnings, in terms of your whole life, the balance and whatever you put into it, it's a choice you can, hopefully you make for yourself. It does seem to be what is quite interesting, isn't it? We've probably covered before that in countries which have the greatest gender freedom, where people can do whatever they want, regardless of their sex, more women end up taking more time off to have children. Ironically. You know, you know yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, it's um, but it, obviously, if you've got a 30-year career um, from which to get from starting out to the board level position, it's going to be harder than if you've got a 40-year career, I guess. You know, yeah, because all other things women beautiful. have been sold this this lie or this myth that toiling in a you know gloomy, bleak corporate job rather than caring for your children, that is freedom, yeah. right? And then they reach 40 and they realise that, you know, they are not happy and... My and wife has done it all. She's had it both. <laughs> and she's absolutely exhausted. I don't know, what do you think? Chris? Good for her. Yeah. The, thing that, the, the thing that amazed me was that the prize money is £820,000, which is 11 million Swedish krona. Wow. So she'd be a millionaire if she went to Sweden. Yes, you think as an economist she'd realise that. I was a millionaire in Italy before Euro. It was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's quite nice they give it. It's technically, I seem to remember, sure I remember reading this somewhere, it's not actually a Nobel Prize. It's Nobel, it's Nobel sponsor, but it's not one of the original prizes. It doesn't really matter. But I think of all the prizes that you get, like a lot of them are for, for like physics, uh, you know, the discovery of some particle, mm. or the proof of the gravity waves or whatever. I can't imagine the physicians you know, using that money very... You know, <laughs> <laughs> what would they do with it, you know? And there's the literature, of course, which, they, which is famously always said that's throwing a, a lifeboat to a man who's, who's made it to the shore. You know, by the time you get the Nobel Prize, you no longer need it. Mm. And then peace, which is, of well, course... if you need just... private health care, you do. Yes, <laughs> that's true. But an economist, I imagine she's probably, you know, she's probably got quite a lot of ideas about what she can do with that. We could look forward to some interesting, possibly some sort of think tank.